This is the VF390, a 390 millimeter fan that is by far the scariest thing we have ever attached to a computer. It is made entirely out of carbon fiber. It spins at a whopping 10,000 RPM, blowing wind out the back at 450 kilometers an hour and guzzles a potentially lethal 250 amps. Do you remember our last highest airflow PC? The one that literally blew the top off our computer case? Those two fans combined were two horsepower. The VF390 is 60. <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to be alive. So before I go, I'd like to tell you about our sponsor. Go to Resolve. The legends are true. Simple, easy to use, yet effective IT software does exist. Humanity is saved. Go to Resolve's remote monitoring and management capabilities allow agents to protect and secure important IT assets. Check out Go to Resolve at the link below. Go to their link. Here, come with me. This is our problem. See that transformer back there? Even if we took the entire power allocation of this industrial unit and powered the fan with it, it wouldn't be enough to do it legally. And even if it could, what mortal power outlet and cord could carry that kind of current? For context, a standard North American outlet will do just south of 2,000 watts. Our Tormac can pull up to 4.8 thousand watts out of the outlet behind it. This fan calls for nearly 10 times that, 45,000 watts, which left us with only a couple of potential options for powering it. Option number the first was to build a Frankenstein battery out of 18650 cells. We've actually done that on this channel before, but frankly, neither Kyle nor Alex trusted me building a, come on with a lithium battery with the 240 cells? Yes. Okay, that would have been a pretty bad idea. A second option for powering the fan was to buy the battery from a Chevy Volt. It's a little on the high side at 360 volt, but because of how GM manufactured it, having the voltage to something that would be usable for our fan is actually relatively simple. The problem with that solution is that for one, a Volt battery is darn expensive. And for two, once we fiddled with the pack, charging it could be difficult and or dangerous. Given the short timeline for this video then, we decided to go the simplest route and spend $2,500 on high current LiPo batteries. But we won't be using them all at once. Instead, we're gonna be doing this. This is flammable, isn't it? Oh good. We've wired up six <laughs> of our battery packs, each of which is four cells in series, making a total of 24S. That gets us up to the voltage that we need. And given that these are high performance 130C packs, theoretically, they could handle up to what, 700 amps? But we need about 250, meaning this should be perfect, as long as we don't wanna run it very long. You see, we haven't run any packs in parallel, which means at full tilt, we're gonna be looking at about six minutes of runtime. Even if we account for our reserve packs here, that gives us 12 minutes of runtime, meaning we better get this right on the first try. Before we just connected it to the battery though, Alex and Kyle over here needed to make sure that it worked. The plan so we hopefully don't blow up something if something's not working correctly is to use this power supply and a boost converter so that we can have 48 volts coming out of this into our fan and we'll have current limits right on here so that if something's incorrect, nothing goes super bad. This is the ESC. For any of you that don't know what an ESC is, it takes DC generally from a battery and converts it to three phase AC, which is plugged into an induction motor of some kind. So if this right here gets to about 80, 85 degrees or so, we're going to have to cut the fan, turn her down a bit. So notice that it's uh, capped on taped for, for isolation. It's uh, a bunch of capacitors. All the actual business end is underneath here. That's where all the FETs will be uh, that do all the switching to get your three phase out. Um, and then there's your control, your logic board. One thing we have to be careful of with this is the inrush current. So you don't wanna just connect all of your batteries to this at once because these will briefly act as a short circuit. <laughs> ah, yes, but they thought of that. May I introduce you to Mr. Spark lead? So inside here, this lead is a resistor. 
when there's a resistance between this lead and that lead, if you attach these two points together, it will slowly charge the capacitors instead of charging them really quickly. So all that we're doing now is plugging it in. Plugging it in, making sure nothing explodes. You plug the hot side in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then you plug this in. Oh, no spark. And you plug that in. Okay, now we smell for magic smoke. The easy way to test now, if it's actually getting power, is to probe the PWM lead, or you can probe this lead here. Five, Five volts. volts! Yeah! Aha. It's power! Oh, there is a PWM signal. Oh, yes, you can see it. Haha! -ha. Yeah! This is a very good explanation of what pulse width modulation is. You have a period, which is the frequency at which this is switching, and I think this is 50 hertz, which is what comes out of a standard RC. And what you're changing is the amount of time that the signal is on, right? So if this is when it's off, and that's when it's on. So right now I have the channel, which is this little potentiometer, set all the way to zero. So fan is no, no, no going, right? Now I am going to slowly rotate this potentiometer and you will see how that line reacts to it. That small distance between there and there is the difference between that fan not moving and then blowing the computer away. We're gonna bolt this frame to the welding table so we don't send both of them into the stratosphere. Oh, hello. Hello, sir. Power. I think I might need almost need new underwear from LTTstore.com. <laughs> it works. We didn't blow anything up. That actually went way better than I thought it did. So Alex, I know Linus is going to want it, but every fiber of my being does not want to hand him the remote. Yeah, that'll be dangerous. Oh okay. no, I want to do the throttle. No. No, I want to do the throttle. What we have tested before is running this off of a single boost converter, and it worked well enough, and that was great because we wanted the current limits and stuff in case something tried to blow up. Yeah. Now I've put two of them in parallel, so we can hopefully get about 60 amps out of it, something like that. Sick. So we can play with this for a bit and not drain our batteries. Oh, okay. Yep. But maybe these will explode. We'll see. Okay. So can you power it on? Output okay, and I should be holding this out, down, output, right? Is the output on? Uh, yes, they're coming the from the on. big okay. boy. So I'm connecting the hot. Okay, hand me the spark lead. Yep. Whoa! It makes a sound when you power it on? It'll make yes. six sounds. Just give me a sec, just give it a second. I know you like to send it, but okay. I, I, I will be gentle, okay. I'll be gentle. So it's not the trigger, it's I'll not the trigger. It's, it's the, the pot over there, oh. just because the trigger's too, way too sensitive. So you're gonna turn that pot, and it's gonna automatically just kick on at 40%. The amount of concern I'm seeing from you, one who is normally kind of reckless actually, really makes me worry because about this Because you thing. have the remote. There you go, now it's my nuts. Okay. Oh. A little bit more, it, it doesn't sound quite right. There we go. There you go. Wow, it's actually surprisingly quiet. We're drawing eight amps at, at what 40, voltage? At 48 volts. At 48 volts. So that's, four, five, that's, wait, this power. is 2% power? Yep. What Ooh. the <laughs> hell is going on here, gentlemen? Wait, how many amps can we do at 100 volts? We can do up to 250 amps at 100 volts. What? Yeah. What? This is, this is not that much. This is unbelievable. What the actual heck is going on here? Okay, so hold on. How many watts is this? Uh, 24 times 12 amps. So, so like this is 250 watts. Yep. This thing will do 45,000 watts. Yes. What's the difference between this and a jet turbine? Uh, do, you, do you know how much thrust this has? No. 60 kilograms. So if you had a person that weighed 60 kilograms... They could ride it. Yeah. Dear God in heaven. Do you understand? Do you understand what's gonna happen to the computer that we put here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, let's get the duct tape. Uh, this is carbon fiber reinforced PETG, which I'm 
pretty sure is going to be fine. Workers comp wants to know your location. <laughs> Do not try this at home. Actually, though. Like, no, actually. Like, like seriously. I'm not too worried about people trying this at home. This is an 8,000 euro thing. Yeah, yeah. So let me get this straight. This is the adapter from the arsehole of the fan, as Kyle calls yes. it. Yes. How do we? To the computer. Yeah. How? How is this supposed to work? Oh, just, just, just relax. Trust me. Basically, the concern is that with that amount of airflow going through here, not only can we not have any fans in its way because they're going to overspin and blow out the headers on the motherboard, it may actually like lift things away from each other. Like to put it in context. 450 kilometers an hour. That's what, double the speed of a category five hurricane? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's gonna be a double hurricane inside this computer. Where's the handle? You're duct taping the shroud to the fan? Yes, we're duct taping the Do you have a better idea? That's not gonna do no, this, jack, you guys. This is, this is a duct, this it's is called duct. duct tape. The force of the computer pushing against it with the cross brace is gonna hold it in place. Does the cross brace come up? Because it's just going to blow it off. That's what the tie downs are for. It's going to tie it down. We have thought about this. Where's the hammer? We've settled on a Core i9-11900K, and this is an RTX 2070. I sincerely hope they survive. Don't worry, it's not bothering. Good catch, new guy. That was very close to shattering earlier than we expected. I really think that we should French rally car all of the glass panels. I don't know what the freak that means. What does that mean? They normally tape up their headlights, so if they shatter, the glass doesn't go everywhere. You know, people often walk up to me and say, oh, it's so cool to meet you, I'm your biggest fan. Now that will never be true ever again, because this is my biggest fan. Um, I forget how these work. <laughs> Seems pretty stable, right? Okay, cool. Um, Hit me. We, ah! <laughs> okay, she's on. Okay, she's on. So we're nice. Okay, let's do it. Torture test, yeah. Torture test. Small FFT. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. GPU stress okay, test. Okay, CPU temps are immediately a hundred. We need to do something here. Yep. Are we ready? Yep. Four. There we go. Okay, so we're still at a hundred degrees though. Oh, 98. Our main issue then is basically just that we don't really have fans directly on our heatsink. The biggest problem is you have too much back pressure into the fan. It's not liking it. Oh, really? Yeah. We, we, we don't have enough throughput. I need more power? Yeah, I think we need more power. <laughs> so I turn it off now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was 2% power. Right. Okay, I'm just about to hand you the remote for the full percent power. Nice. Okay. We're gonna put a current clamp on here. You cannot go over 100 because 100 amps is all that we can measure. Wait, are we not gonna talk about the fact that that door is open uh, and that garage door is open? Okay. Because we are gonna be generating enough airflow through this room that that's a legitimate concern. We bent the doors when we had the doors closed. Yeah, so we, we, had the we doors blew it there. Yeah. We blew the air out of that door, and these ones right here went whoomp. And we were like, oh, let's not do that. Yep. <laughs> okay, we ready? Okay, that's five amps. Five amps? Yeah. And watch we can that, do 20x this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's seven amps. We're already down, not thermal throttling anymore. Let's try to get to 10. Wow, she's real touchy. Okay, we're at 96 degrees. Temps are going down. You guys want to go to 20 amps? Sure. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Woo -hoo -hoo! It's cooling, that's for sure. Okay, 30 amps! Wow! She goes, boys! 40, 50, whoa, look at the cables go.
40, 43. It was wrong 300 watts on an air cool. And it was only hitting 94 <laughs> degrees. Okay. Round two without the computer. Okay. Woo! And logistics was so concerned about the CPU. So can I pitch a crazy idea? Yes. Can we put oh, the battery wait, pack wait. here in the flow of the air? Yeah, I think it'll in, be in the fine path of the that. airflow, rather. A hundred amps. Then that was like a third power. Mm. A bit above that. Yeah, about that. What the hell? Okay, what are we at? That's ten amps. And without the computer, wow! Without the computer in the way she goes. Whoa! This kind of shows you how fans can be optimized for either airflow or static pressure. This is clearly all about that airflow. No trouble. Okay, now here's something I want to know. Oh, you guys lied. I can feel it 100% coming through here. Can you see my hair moving? Hold on, I'm gonna give it a little more. This is at the back door! Okay! That's only 60 amps! Wow! I have never seen anything like it. How high did we get? 60? Yeah. That's a fifth of full power? Okay, we going again? You guys want to go full bore? Yeah! Um, I've been informed that when we're running at full bore, I am not allowed to stand behind it. Something, something, key man clause, something, liability, anyway. Well, I mean the point is, I'm gonna put this wig on my mop head here and see if I can even hold it in place. I mean, that's basically Linus, right? 10 amps, 20, 30, that's 100. Smoking. It's like, it's like the whole thing. You can't um, smell through Ooh. the camera, but I assure you, it smells a lot. Don't do what we do. Yeah, please don't. Especially, don't tell you about our sponsor. Circuit Specialists. They provide electronic components, tools, and supplies to the STEM community at competitive prices. We're talking resistors, capacitors, soldering stations, oscilloscopes, and more. You know, computer stuff. They got it all. Circuit specialists have chosen to use their expert part sourcing abilities to give customers access to tools and components they may otherwise not have. Maybe they're unavailable. Maybe they're too expensive. Think Robin Hood, but for tech. Their commitment to quality ensures that you receive reliable and high performance products suited for your needs. Let circuit specialists help you upgrade your electronics toolkit by checking them out at the link below and using offer code LMG for 10% off. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might enjoy the one where Alex and I used a different fan to cool a computer and it blew the top off. Or you might enjoy the one where Colin and I tried to uh, make a battery out of 18650 cells. That one also involved fire and that door and disposing of batteries. <laughs>